Christianer, initials AA, Santa Rosa, California. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Can a woman wear designed headscarf or loose abaya outside the house, like a polka dot abaya? Websites have many designed Muslim abayas. Question says, can a woman wear a designed headscarf or polka dot abaya outside of the home? The general rule is, wear that which is loose, that which is not fitting, and that which suits the purpose of the hijab. The general rule is to have a distinct Islamic personality, presence, and appearance. The general rule is not to wear perfume, is not to wear colors or styles or fabrics, fashion that is so outlandish that it brings so much negative attention to you and lustful attention. And pay close attention to my precise words. Because many people, they'll say, if I wear all black, then it brings what? Attention, which it does. You're walking down the street in New York, you're wearing all black, it brings attention. You have on all white, it brings attention. Why is your face covered? Everybody understand this? You have on gloves. This is a reality. But it's not lustful intention, inshallah. And if it is lustful intention, there's nothing you can do about it. If someone that's sick, I wonder what she looks like under there. I wonder what she's wearing under there. I wonder what Muslim women are like. What's her body like? But the average person, he sees all black covering. It's not necessarily an issue over lustful attention. Now you wear tight pink, tight pants, red, this color, that color. You're getting attention, which is also lustful attention. So pay close attention. And many people, they have ignorance and they mix these two concepts together in which they do not belong. You can't help the attention that's brought to you just by being Muslim. That in itself is attention. You practicing the sunnah is attention. You're a sore thumb on the finger of the kuffar, or the, the hand of the kuffar. You can't help that. But lustful intention is what? It's a different story. And if someone is attracted or gravitated by your fob and your beard, you smell good. You look good. Muslim men look good. That's something you can't help. But it's not like me walking outside with a muscle shirt on and tennis shorts on. This is a different story. And the same applies to women as well. The same applies what? To women as well. So therefore, any type of garment that you wear that fulfills these main conditions, bid the night tile, and it doesn't bring this type of outlandish, lustful attention, it's permissible. Whether it's solid black, whether it's brown, whether it's red, whether it's blue, if it's polka dot, can't say that it's haram to wear polka dot garment. Because we do not have a specific text stating that it's haram to wear polka dots, that it's haram to wear pinstripes, that it's haram to wear check, whatever style you want to mention, whatever style it may be. Everybody understand this? What's important is that the garment is vast, it's wide. And it's not something that's outlandish, we said. An outlandish color. Everybody understand this? It's a combination of things. A woman could wear black, and it could be totally outlandish, such as tight. Black tights, black pants, leggings, yoga pants, whatever you want to say. And a woman could wear black, and it could be loose. So it's not about the color. Nor is it it's about the color with the tightness or the looseness. It's about the color, the looseness, and the perfume. And it's a combination of things. It's a combination of things. What's important is, the more solid the fabric is, the darker the color is, the looser it is, the more Sunnah and Islamic and African that the style of the garment is, it's closer to piety. Because that's the clothing of the Muslims. The thobe is not what the Prophet wore, but it's the clothing of the Muslims. No one is going to mistake you for something else when they see you like this. That's a Muslim beard and a trimmed mustache. Sikhs don't trim their mustaches. Hasidic Jews don't trim their mustaches. And they have the side, huh? Not, it's kind of sideburns, huh? <laughs> There's a specific word they have for it. What's important is, is that wear the clothing that Bidinai Tala is closest to the Sunnah. My personal advice is to wear a solid color and not to wear polka dots. And if it was my daughter or my wife or my mother or my sister or my aunt, I would ask her and tell her not to wear polka dots outside of the house. However, you have to look at the time and the place. And this is not, we're not making it like a small, simple thing. But you have to look at the reality that how you're dressing is 10 times better than how the average non-Muslim woman is dressing. If you get on a bus or a plane and you see a woman with a skirt, the very first thing you think is that she's a Jew. It's the first thing in New York City. She has to be Jewish with a skirt on. If she's not Jewish, then she's an older lady, an a older, a, a, a older woman from South America who goes to church. She has on a skirt. She's a devout Christian woman. 
But no quote unquote regular American woman wears a skirt outside. It's that weird. And if it's a skirt, it's a mini skirt and a tight skirt. Everyone has on pants, business pants, tight pants, whatever the case may be. So wearing a skirt is something that's a sore thumb. A long skirt is a what? Sore thumb. A loose fitting shirt is a, a sore thumb. A woman with long sleeves and it's hot outside is totally weird. So you're wearing an overgarment, a khimar, a, a big long dress. That in itself is already a major step against huh, the society. So that in itself is good. But don't stop there. Be the nice panel ta'ala. Try to get as close to the sunnah as you can. Try to get as close to piety as you can. What is important, Muslims are of different levels. Some Muslims are barely praying, barely fasting, barely making hajj. Some Muslims are barely seeking ilm. This speaker is good for these Muslims. He's good for them. Because if it was for him, they wouldn't be making a salat. So don't say, oh, don't listen to him. You can't listen to him. Everybody's not coming to the masjid and sitting and learning and benefiting. Everyone is not like that. There are levels of Muslims. And the same applies to the hijab. Do I condone it? Do I say that it's a good thing? No, but it is a reality. The sister is coming to the masjid. She has on a khimar. She has on a polka dot overgarment. Alhamdulillah for that. Perhaps she meets the good sisters who wear the niqab. But we're all black, and those sisters will be kind to her. And not say, what are you doing here in this masjid? Get out. Are you Salafi? Are you on a sunnah? What is your hijab? You look a hot mess. But they'll befriend her, and be her sister. And they'll teach her, and they'll educate her about the proper way, and the best way of hijab. So this is a very important concept. It's for us to be mindful of the state of the Muslims in 2017. Wallahu alam.